Welcome back inside of the Plastic Planet. I am your host, Nick Knack, hanging out with you guys tonight to bring you a very, very, very special video. One that has been in the works now for, oh gosh, almost like two months, maybe going back to February, maybe three months now. It is already May, in the middle of May. But uh, nevertheless, yeah, this has been maybe three months in the, in the works. And that is, of course, my 2019 archive toy room tour for you guys tonight. Um, I did a room tour, uh, archive toy room tour uh, like this last year, but so much has changed. Uh, the room has kind of done a 180 in some respects. Uh, before, the archive room was kind of a, 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 a living up to its namesake a little bit. It was sort of a throwaway room where I kind of stored things where I didn't want to keep up here in my main collection room that I'm in right now. Um, this is what I consider the plastic planet right up here. And this, of course, is a very focused room as far as what is in it. It is mostly, you know, a high-end Star Wars collectibles from Hot Toys and Sideshow Collectibles and Gentle Giant, etc. What is beyond this door here is what I would consider my archive uh, toy room. And that is, I really do believe, a very eclectic but very fun toy collection with, uh, with uh, toy brands naming off from Star Wars, DC Comics, Transformers, and, and a whole lot more. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get beyond that door and uh, see what's down there. And hey, if you are a brand new to this channel and just checking me out for the first time, please do consider a subs uh, hitting that subscribe button for me. I would really, really appreciate that. All right, but enough of that. Let's get on it right now. Let's get to those toys right beyond this door. All right, let's do it right now. Plastic Planet. With your host, it's Nick Nick. So enough of my mug. Here is my archive toy room. New and improved. Uh, hence the sign says right up there, Nick Nick's Plastic Planet, the archive room. Uh, you know, this. Uh, so much of my collection has now kind of taken on uh, kind of a character in its own with my YouTube channel. And I wanted to have a sign up to kind of commemorate that. So I had that made at my uh, local Walgreens with some uh, with the graphics there for Nick Nick's Plastic Planet. That was special done by my good buddy and often collaborator on this channel, Uncle Pat. So once again, as always, thank you, Uncle Pat. He's kind of the unseen uh, backbone of this channel. He does a lot of behind the scenes work for me. And I just want to give him a shout out right now. But yeah, as you can see, I've got a ton of really really cool stuff going on in this hallway going down into the archive room uh you know what when you have a home uh, and you have a family you got to make the most of the space you have provided for you and i believe i've done that my wife has generously given me two rooms in the house and they're two very good sized rooms at that uh so i've tried to you know really maximize my space and yeah it looks a little cluttered in here um as far as the wall space goes but i gotta be honest with you guys i kind of kind of dig the apple bees look you know what i'm talking about when you go to applebee's and you sit down at the table and there's just knickknack no pun intended on my name but knickknacks bullshit all over the walls well that's kind of what i like to do as far as how my collection looks so i'm just going to start right up here i've got a robocop 2 uh, mini poster there of course with the play arts kai robocop figure uh, he's an absolutely awesome figure i think he's uh close to 10 inches tall he is amazing um this was an import picked him up at a comic book store oh man uh, maybe a year or two ago. No, more than that. Maybe like two, three years ago. Yeah, I dig him a lot. He is absolutely freaking awesome. He's a way, a step up above what NECA produced, but you know, a step down from Hot Toys. You know, uh, we all have to live with our budgets. And while I love RoboCop, it's definitely not the uh, ultimate priority in my collect uh, collecting habits, I should say. So as we come down here, I've got a little Pac-Man. This is an arcade one-up Pac-Man decoration. And we'll be getting to arcade one-ups here in just a second. I've got two down here in the archive room. If you're familiar with my channel, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, a little Godzilla 1985 action. Absolutely love Godzilla. That's a That was a fun movie. That movie uh, blew my hair back when I was 10 years old. Uh, it has a short. If you've ever seen Godzilla 1985, it has a short right before it. 
And it's just this little tiny uh, animated short called Godzilla vs. Bambi. Freaking hilarious. I mean, when I was 10 years old, I about pissed my pants watching that, laughing. It was so awesome. Uh, and again, it's got some other, some other, you know, pop culture art here. A lot of Superman. A lot of, yeah, I'm a big DC Comics fan. Uh, these, of course, are the DC Multiverse figures that came out about a year ago uh, in the Super Friends line. Very, very cool. I love how that the bases spell out Super Friends in that sort of real 70s fantastic uh, kind of graphic artwork there. Looking really, really nice. And, of course, up here I've got a little bit of an homage to my favorite arcade, uh, arcade game of all time, I should say. That is, of course, Pac-Man. I've got uh, two of these little mini Pac-Man arcade machines that were sold at uh, walmart they actually do work um they're very very cool and of course moving over here i've got uh i've got the uh, a pac-man lunchbox my wife bought for me i've reviewed lunch boxes and and this one in particular uh, a number of times on this channel so i won't spend a lot of time on that a uh, nice little return of the jedi lunchbox there as well from 1983 and then as we move down here i've got a superman 3 that is an lp record in there that i bought at an old record store when i was going out of business back in 1999 and i've hung on to it and really glad i did because it's absolutely awesome um you know superman 3 might not be the best superman movie they ever made but i don't know that movie has a lot of heart and i've always kind of still has a soft spot in my heart as far as uh as far as superhero movies go uh some more superman uh, graphic art there i think i bought that at hobby lobby a uh, lenticular picture over there picked that up at like a gordman's that's fun and of course coming over here we have got a uh, captain kirk figure that is Really, really cool. That is from the uh, Tholian Web or Web of the Tholians episode. Uh, really, really cool. When Captain Kirk got stuck between dimensions when they were uh, exploring the USS Defiant, I want to say, as it was slipping through a temporal rift. And Captain Kirk got stuck in between dimensions. And they had to transport him back at the end. They all thought he was dead. And he showed up all in, in uh, Lieutenant Uhura's mirror. That was really, really cool. She, she thought he was a ghost. Ah, awesome episode. Of course, we have got a Knight Rider kit and a uh, Back to the Future DeLorean. I believe those are from Diamond Select. They both light up and have uh, have their own little sets of gimmicks on them. Um, if I can get it going for you. I am the voice of Knight Industry 2000's microprocessor. Yeah. K-I-T-T for easy reference. Yeah, very kit fun. Very fun. The dashboard, the interior lights up too. And uh, so does this uh, DeLorean. It also lights up if I can reach it. About, there we go. So really, really fun. I uh, got an old uh, Mattel uh, Superman up there. Got an old Jurassic Park uh, T-Rex. That was a cool uh, 69 Challenger I found at a Walgreens for 10 bucks. Uh, this shelf is sort of work in progress, progress here. Just got a T-800 uh, Terminator in there with a 1980s wind-up robot uh, from Tomy. And then, of course, an old Garfield, uh, Garfield figure that I had from my childhood. Uh, there's a Superman replica, Super Friends... Uh, uh, character key, kind of cool. Uh, I got Soundwave here, a metallic signed Soundwave, bought at Hobby Lobby. Uh, there is the Hot Rod figure that came out in the uh, Walmart uh, exclusive uh, reissue line. This came out last fall. Kept him in the box. He's really cool, along with a arcade one-up Pac-Man uh, tin sign over there. And then up here is really cool. This is a radio-controlled R2-D2 12-inch from, I think, 1978, 1979, one of those years. Um, very early, just, you know, post-Star Wars, but pre-Empire Strikes Back, along with his counterpart there. That is a 12-inch Kenner Hasbro, or Kenner, not, not Hasbro, Kenner uh, C-3PO from 19, oh, I want to say 79, 1980, whenever the 12-inch line came out. Uh, so there is him. Very, very cool. Two, two, two action figures I picked up at a recent uh, collectibles uh, show. Very, very fun. Of course, over here is my Sideshow Collectibles Indiana Jones from 2008, I want to say. He's getting up there. He's a little old, a little outdated, but he's still fun. And he goes great next to this uh, 20 by 27 by 40 uh, full uh, uh, Indiana Jones poster, Raiders of the Lost Ark, I picked up a number of years ago. And then up here, I featured this particular item. In the infancy of my channel, I picked this up. And again, like I said, this is a real eclectic collection down here. There's a lot of different stuff you're going to notice. Uh, and all of it kind of has, you know, a real, uh, real meaning to me as far as like, you know, going back to my childhood. This is just like the nostalgia room from, from hell, kind of. Uh, this is, of course, a Fisher Price circus train. And I, all the animals are there. All the characters are there, I think. Um, it was funny. I picked uh, this up. And the only character it didn't come with 
was that monkey back there, if you can see. That monkey was the only piece that I had left over from my childhood when I had this exact same piece. So it was kind of like a, it was kind of like fate, you know, if if you believe in that kind of stuff. Not that I do, but it was kind of like almost fate that I that I picked this up and then it had what pieces were left in it, and and the only piece that it needed was the one that I had left over from my childhood. So that's really cool. And then of course it got a nice sign, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, one of my favorite NES games, uh, original NES games. And as we move up, I've got an Atari Twenty Six Hundred on the wall. Um, no, that is not from my childhood. I just picked that up. It's uh, it's non-functioning, but I really wanted to put something on the wall here that really kind of encapsulated my love of old retro gaming, because uh, this really is what started it all, isn't it? You know, Atari 2600. And of course, I got a, a Space Invaders uh, cartridge box up there with it. And of course, on the ceiling, I did uh, kind of customize this graphic. It didn't turn out great, but it sticks to the, it sticks to the ceiling. Nice little Space Invader. So, uh, very, very cool. I really dig this display a lot. All right, so as we proceed our way down into the archive room itself, that's the hallway, uh, we are greeted by my 1995 Kenner Hasbro uh, Millennium Falcon. This, of course, was released in 1995. Got this in college. Uh, that was a gift, and uh, yeah, I've hung on to it. It's, you know, it's hard to believe even the reissue itself is now 24, almost 25 years old. That is just bonkers to me. Uh, but nevertheless, that is where we are at. So yeah, this is the 1995 reissue Millennium Falcon. I've got a number of ships hung up along the ceiling here. I've got a uh, uh, the uh, old full-size X-Wing. I think that came out in 97. Uh, it's all the FX X-Wings with sound effects and whatnot. Uh, with the Luke Skywalker that's like permanently placed in the cockpit and the R2 as well. Uh, so you couldn't actually remove them, but it was actually really fun. You know, that was the first time an X-Wing came out. That was in three and three quarter inch scale. That would really, you know, um, you know, really was like in scale to three and three quarter inch with what the ship actually looked like. Um, of course, the original has our Kenner ship was much smaller, and so this was really a step up at the time, even if you couldn't remove the figures. Of course, they made subsequent versions, which I also own, where you can remove uh, both R2 and Luke Skywalker, minus some of the bells and whistles that that one has. And then, of course, along this wall, this wall that runs all the way over to the end of the room here, um, all the way over there, if you can't tell, I've got my VOTC vintage original trilogy collection of course now there's joined by prequel figures as well up there um, on you know vintage style card backs really really fun collection and you know something that a lot of star wars collectors really really dig in the la in, in the last couple years uh last several years i should say um these are these are kind of coveted and even even if they are you know not exactly original uh vintage uh they are still very coveted and very uh very uh, um, worthwhile collectibles to have um, in my opinion of course there is the a-wing fighter right there i believe that came out in 1998 and then of course there's the blockade runner as i move down into the archive room here uh, that was like an action fleet sort of thing except it's a little larger size action collection uh, this came out in 95 96 i want to say and then of course it is joined by the arc fighter from episode 3 revenge of the sith Alrighty guys, well before I get too far into the archive room, let me just kind of step back, give you guys a little bit of lay of the land a little bit as far as uh, how the room is laid out before I get into the detail on what's on the shelf. Um, as I kind of step back a little bit and to keep in mind, this is an unfinished basement. Uh, so, it, you know, it is kind of raw in some senses. You've got my ugly ass hot water heater there. So just ignore that. That's what C-3PO and R2-D2 are there for, that, that large stand-up. They're there to kind of block that out, even though they're not doing a real good job of that right now. What's up with that, guys? But uh, as you can see, as I come around here, I've got two arcade one-up machines. These things are awesome. I absolutely really enjoy having them in my home. Um, even if they're not, you know, the most accurate to what, uh, to what the original arcade uh, cabinets, upright cabinets were like. Um, there are some liberties taken there for uh, cost purposes. I mean, they were only $300 a piece as opposed to, you know, maybe $3,000 a piece, which you pay for the genuine article. Uh, but they are really, really fun. They're the closest thing I'll ever get to having a uh, stand-up cabinet arcade machine in my home, uh, unless I, you know, hit the lottery or something. Um, even then, I'm not so sure because they're, they're, those things are old and require so much maintenance and they're so damn heavy. I don't know. They just seem like more of a pain in the ass than they're worth. Uh, so these are really, really a nice uh, substitute and they've really kind of scratched that itch for me even if they're not anywhere near authentic they still look really really cool i think i don't necessarily play them a whole lot uh but you know they're really fun to look at and they really do kind of bring out the spirit in the room as as it would be uh for what i'm going for here in my my decorative motif as as, as one might say um over here as you can see i do have my uh, more of a functioning gaming center. Um, I am really into retro games. I've got my Atari plug and play in, uh, plugged into that uh, HDMI, into that uh, modern uh, flat screen right there, and then plugged into this old uh, 
conventional tube television. I've got my original NES right there and my Super NES. I've got Super Empire Strikes Back going there for you guys. Uh, I did a, did a full review of Super Star Wars a couple weeks ago. Do check that out. Um, this isn't a gaming channel by any sense, but sometimes it's fun to visit those things. And I, I do enjoy uh, playing retro games, so um, if you can't tell. Uh, I got a nice tie interceptor there. Got Luke in his back to tank right here. Got some games there. Got uh, some Pac-Man pops. You're not going to see a lot of pops in my collection, but uh, those are some of my favorites. Um, I think I have maybe one or two other pops other than these, but uh, you know I do tend to like the more cartoony pops. The uh, when you're actually dealing with human beings, I think they're kind of kind of lame and, and just you know they're very generic and you know and I don't know unmemorable. So I'm not a big pops collector, but these were really really awesome. I had to get these. Uh, Blu-ray player right there. There's some. Uh, Super Mario Brothers figures over here. Uh, lighting isn't the best in this part of the room. It's more for ambiance and for filming. Tie bomber here, and then as we go up, you're gonna notice this is one of my uh, one of my only shelves I have left uh, displaying my Hasbro uh, modern Star Wars collection. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of go top down. I've got some Ewoks up there. Um, really, really cool. I do like do like the Ewoks to a certain extent. The Ewoks in moderation are all good. A little too much Ewoks is maybe not, but uh, Ewoks in moderation is cool. Uh, there's some Force, some Force Unleashed action figures. Or, I mean, they're more like statues up there. And, of course, there was a, the old... Uh, I don't even remember what line that was, that Darth Vader up there. It was like a standstill statue line from 97. Uh, they were plastic, of course, but they were kind of, uh, you know, Kenner's uh, uh, modern attempt at... Uh, Kind of appealing to adult collectors. Uh, I like that figure a lot. There's some action fleet uh, at at, and there's an old uh, uh, micro uh, uh, die cast sand crawler there moving down. We have the modern Hasbro Job of the Hut there with Salacious Crumb and Ula. That's really, really cool. And then, of course, over here, we've got the Bantha. This was the Bantha that came out in 1998. And, and to this day, I mentioned this in another video, uh, this is my favorite version of the Bantha they've ever done. They've done some subsequent versions uh, that were a little bit different than this one, particularly with the eye. Um, this one does have an eye. It's in there, but it's a little more hidden. There it is. There it is. But, you know, it just to me, it just looks perfect. The other, one, the other ones, their eyes look a little, like, I don't know, kind of felty, almost like they're made with, like, fabric glue. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, this is still, to date, my very favorite version of the Bantha, even though the Tusken Raider on top of there is actually a vintage original trilogy uh, Tusken Raider that I bought and opened. Uh, the, uh, the original Tusken Raider that came out with this piece was ass, so I replaced that. Uh, of course, over here, it's joined by a 2002 release of a female Tusken Raider, which is really, really cool. And, of course, I think that's, a, that's supposed to be like a, like a womp rat or some kind of desert dog thing with it. Very, very cool. Very, very fun. Um, and of course, there is an infant in or a uh, young uh, Tusken Raider, youngling, I guess, in her backpack there. Just, man, Star Wars action figures just used to just reek with creativity. That they just, I don't know, in my opinion, that just doesn't happen so much anymore. But back then, even in 2002, say what you will about the movies, the prequels, some of the best Star Wars lines came out of those movies, in my opinion. And uh, this figure is definitely indicative of that. Uh, there's a Force Unleashed uh, Tusken Raider right there. Got some Jawas. Got a Ronto right there. Got a uh, Collector Fleet uh, Star Destroyer in box behind it. Um, got an old R1 droid back there. Really, really cool. Um, the precursor to the R2 units. Got some Jawas. Got a Mana Man. He kind of fell over there. Shit. I'll have to fix that later. Alrighty, so moving down here, I've got my Black Series collection, at least the uh, part of it that I have displayed currently. I'm not, I don't have all my Black Series up right now, uh, particularly from the sequel trilogy. I've got a couple Rogue One uh, figures as well. These are the ones that I'm kind of excited to have out right now, though. Uh, most of it's original trilogy. There might be one prequel character in there. I think that Qui-Gon, and that might be it. Uh, that R2 unit is, that R2-D2 is actually, he's a little out of scale. He is not a Black Series figure. Um, that is the uh, die-cast ones that came out from that Disney uh, that Disney store uh, exclusive line with die-cast figures. It's really cool. He's a little out of scale, but he's he's works as a stand-in for for now. I don't have an R2 uh, Black Series character or figure as of yet. I uh, should have picked him up when I had the chance like three times, but I, I balked at it, and now I regret that. But nevertheless, really, really fun, uh, you know, really, really fun collection for the most part, even though these things are kind of a pain in the ass to stand. Uh, they're always falling down on me and shit that really annoys the holy hell out of me 
But uh, yeah, it's a nice little shelf. I do like that a lot. I really do dig this stage that the Darth Vader 40th anniversary came with. Uh, even though you really can't see the backdrop because the figures kind of block it out. But uh, yeah, I really like that a lot. That's really a nice homage to the original 12 back characters. Uh, the original 12 back uh, line of Kenner Star Wars figures that came out in 1978. Really, really cool homage to that. So that's really cool. Uh, you know, so overall, this is a really fun shelf. Alrighty, as we move down the shelf, I've got my entire Jedi Council scene. Uh, this was a, these came in multiple uh, packs of like, I think it was like three or four different sets to collect to, to get the entire council. And, uh, you know, they weren't exactly cheap back in the day when I picked them up. I can't remember what year these came out with. I want to say 2002, 2003, 2004, somewhere in there. Um, they weren't exactly cheap. I was really glad I stuck it out and got the entire uh, Jedi Council scene. This is one of my favorite uh, sets that I have in three and three quarter inch scale. I just think it looks really, really awesome. What it truly needs is an awesome, uh, like, Coruscant backdrop. I, I have yet to, to 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 work on that. Maybe that's just something I need to do is go find some high-res images off the Internet and, you know, somehow print them out and get them onto, you know, get them onto some cardstock and it'd look really, really sweet uh, with the, you know, with the, with the bustling skyscape of Coruscant in the background there, you know, probably with the sun setting would look really, really awesome. But yeah, I really like this set a lot. Uh, figures look great. The whole Jedi Council is, is represented at least as it was in episode one. I think there is actually a little bit of a mashup here. Uh, some of these are episode two uh, council members because they weren't the same in all three movies. Uh, I can't tell you which ones. If you guys know, let me know in the comments section. But uh, yeah, I think I think it's mostly episode one. But I do believe there are some episode two mashups in here as well. I don't know if Shaq T was on the council in uh, in episode one. She might have been, but I don't remember. So yeah, really, really cool. Really, really fun. Dig this shelf a lot. And then as I move down here, I've just got some more. Some episode two fanfare. The episode uh, two uh, Geonosian Arena Beasts. Got the Accolade, the Reek, and the... And, uh, and uh, what's this guy? What's this guy's name here? That's the Reek. That's the Accolade. What's the Nexu? The Nexu. So yeah, really, really cool. Got Obi Wan there with his spear. Got uh, sexy uh, Padme there. Um, you know, and that's Force Unleashed figure. Really, really cool. Episode one, 12 inch Watto behind it. Uh, Force Unleashed uh, Jango Fett and Boba back there. Uh, and there's a. If you can see him, he's kind of dark. There's a Force Unleashed Count Dooku as well. And then one more shelf. It's getting dark down here, I know. Uh, that's a couple uh, Clone Wars or Episode 2 uh, Trade Federation uh, battle droids. There's the... I can't remember their names anymore, but uh, yeah, there's the, there they are. They're really, really cool. Sorry, I'm having kind of a kind of having a senior moment on you guys here. I can't remember the names of these things, uh, but yeah, really, really cool. Leave the names in the comments section if you remember, because I can't. I'd have to go to the Google, and I'm not going to do that right now. So yeah, very, very cool, though. Alrighty, so as we move away from my one modern Star Wars shelf, uh, you can see uh, the collection does get a little bit more eclectic. There is some more Star Wars stuff to be had over here, but there's also some other lines and collectibles that, that are really, really cool, and, and it gets kind of kind of interesting as we move along this wall here. So let's get to that right now. Alrighty, so as we move across here, you can, you're going to see I've got my TIE Interceptor up there. I think I got that in 2001. Uh, that came out as part of the Power of the Jedi assortment post-Episode 1. And then right, of course, here is my Slave 1. That is an Attack of the Clone Slave 1. And so it's a little different than the old vintage Empire Strikes Back Slave 1 and the uh, Power of the Force 2 Slave 1 that came out in 1996, I want to say. Uh, this is a little bit of a different mold. It doesn't have the cargo space behind it that that particular Slave 1 had because there was no you know, play feature with a Han Solo and Carbonite. But what it does have, it does have a lot of shooting uh, torpedoes and whatnot, and it's got it's got uh, space mines that it can drop. And unlike the original Slave 1, this cockpit can actually fit two figures, which is really, really cool and a, uh, an obvious play advantage, play feature for Attack of the Clones because you got Jango and Boba uh, Fett uh, up in that cockpit there laying space mines for Obi-Wan in the orbit around Geonosis, which is... <laughs> I don't care what you think about the Attack of the Clones. That... that, uh, that particular scene was so epic from just a just from a special effects standpoint if you remember the way those those space mines would kind of boom, you know when they when they'd fire in the orbit of geonosis and all the all the r debris in the geonosian rings would smash in together and uh, and, and obi-wan's jedi starfighter maneuvering through that that was an absolutely awesome special effects scene so th that that slave particular slave one kind of has a soft spot with me Got a poster back there. That's a that's a Pac-Man uh, 2600 artwork uh, cartridge um, artwork back there. Really love that a lot. Got that uh, from a seller off eBay. Uh, got the 2004 uh, vintage 
original trilogy collection Millennium Falcon right there. Same mold as the 1995 Power of the Force 2 mold and the same mold as the original 1978 uh, Kenner. Uh, Millennium Falcon. What is different about this piece is, uh, and I did a full video comparing and contrasting all the different Millennium Falcons that at least I have from over the years from Kenner Hasbro. Uh, what this particular piece has for the first time, it actually has an LED light up back engine. It lights up blue and that was why I bought yet another Millennium Falcon at the time, even though I already had one um, and I would go on to buy yet another again Millennium Falcon when I bought the Legacy Collection Millennium Falcon uh, in 2008 I think when that one came out, you know, four years later. So anyway, like I said, I did a video on this about a year ago uh, outlining the differences in all the different Millennium Falcons that have come out over the years uh, minus the, the dog shit one that came out with Solo. I, yeah, it was kind of what inspired me to talk about these actually was that seeing that piece in the stores. But yeah, check that video out. Go, go deep in the archive of the Plastic Planet uh, catalog of videos and you'll find it um, on my playlist there. So a uh, video. So just keep going down to about last April. You'll see it. So anyway, that's really cool. Behind that is my Moonraker movie poster. I got that just recently. It's obviously a reproduction, but that's really, really fun. I mean, I'm, I'm a James Bond fan, a casual James Bond fan, not like a serious one. Uh, and I really do have a soft spot for Roger Moore in 70s and, uh, you know, 70s and early 80s cheese that were the Roger Moore James Bond movies. And Moonraker really epitomized that. Probably the worst James Bond movie to ever come out. Uh, but that is definitely the funnest poster. Yeah. Obviously, the movie came out in 1979, so it was very Star Wars inspired um, at the time. I just love that that movie poster with Jaws floating there in the background, and and uh, yeah, you know James Bond looks very, very, very similar to Luke Skywalker on the original one of the original 1977 poster uh, uh, Star Wars posters. So that yeah, looks really, really cool, really, really fun. Very Star Wars inspired, if you ask me. So it has a place down here, right behind my Space Invaders uh, arcade one-up machine. Uh, looks really, really cool. So anyway, so as I mentioned before, this is an unfinished basement. So in order to kind of cover up, I don't even have drywall down here. So in order to kind of cover up all the soft insulation, I, I did go to my Joann's fabric. Yeah, that was <clears throat> that was a manly trip, but went to my Joann's fabric and got all this uh, kind of space-esque. Uh, fabric to kind of cover up that insulation uh particularly in this corner so it looks a lot better i mean the insulation is, is visible behind the fish tanks so it only goes down about that far but yeah it looks really really much better than it did before uh, i've got a poster over here that i've got to kind of get around um but yeah as you guys can see it just kind of winds around the room here and uh, so yeah let's get to it and i'll show you guys off some more stuff Alrighty, so check it out. This is my Predator fish tank that I just recently set up. And this was kind of the inspiration to kind of redo the entire room was to fit this tank in here. And of course that giant yellow fish there, the gold and white fish. That is the unofficial mascot of the archive toy room. That is of course, asshole fish. He even has his own theme song. Asshole fish, he's asshole fish. So yeah, he swims around. He's a, he's a real dick. But, uh, you know, he, he actually has mellowed out considerably since I got him some tank mates. And these are all kind of some nasty African cichlids in there. Uh, these are some fire mouth cichlids and whatnot in there. They're all assholes. So this is like the biggest dickhead tank ever. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a frat house full of over testosterone fuckheads in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're very pretty though. And, uh, yeah, so they, they, they're really, really cool. Anyway, I'm not talking fish here. I, this is an action figure channel. We don't talk aquariums on here too much, but I do like to kind of show off my aquariums because they are part of my room. And I kind of try to model the motif after of the aquarium with, with, to match it up with what's going on in the room. And you'll notice, of course, this is kind of taking on some of that cheesy sci-fi, uh, kind of, you know, 1970s, you know, one of my, one of my friends kind of, when I showed him this or in my last video, he kind of commented about this when I showed him one of my last videos, uh, that it kind of reminded him of 1970s sci-fi pinball. And, uh, so that's kind of the idea here, you know, with my space invader machine, uh, right next to it, right over here. And of course my James Bond poster up there was to kind of, kind of match it up with, with that stuff. And of course the, uh, space, uh, fabric I have up, 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 uh, up, up above it. So it's kind of match it up with that. So it looks really, really cool. I do love the UFO, uh, ornament in there and then of course there's like these space plants in there and you got some kind of like titan in there you know about to eat an octopus it looks really really cool really really cheesy fun and there's like a zombie head in there that just kind of kind of matches the the backdrop really really well with some black sand 
So yeah, it looks really, really cool. Really happy with how this fish tank turns out, and the fish have been doing really, really well in it, and that's just that's just even more of a bonus. So really, really fun. And as I move up here on top of the fish tank, I've got some things. I got my my Power of the Force Two Rancor right there. That thing, that piece is still really held up. I know they've redone the Rancor a few times since then. I don't have any of the subsequent versions of the Rancor, but I still really do love this piece uh, a lot. Looks really good. It's held up nice. It's it's very indicative of the original vintage, but it's it's got a little more i don't know it's a little more a little more texture on it it's it, it kind of has like almost like a rubber plastic feel to it and you know considering it's almost over 20 years old now it's held up really really nicely uh, there's an ornamental skull there that was kept in one of my fish tanks for a while there now i just kind of have it have it out and there of course is the liploridon actually i don't think that's his name from jurassic world but i'm just i kind of have a, i've been watching a lot of discovery channel lately uh the curiosity stream uh discovery channel streaming service and um uh, and uh, in that in that that particular uh, documentary I was watching, they called this guy Leplorodon. They didn't call him that in Jurassic World, but anyway, large, giant, you know, seed-faring monster from the from the Jurassic period. Same difference. So anyway, there is him. He came with the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom line. Uh, very very cool. There's a lot more of that to come. And then of course up here I've got my ATMT. I want to call it, from Rogue One. Uh, behind him is a light up Blinky uh, ghost from Pac Man. And then, of course, there is the Power of the Force 2 uh, Tauntaun Luke Skywalker. Just some just some bits and pieces that I kept out. I did put away a ton. I mean, I put away a ton of my Power of the Force 2 and modern Star Wars uh, collectibles. They're, they're in a large box in the storage room. I'll show you guys here uh, near the end of the video. But nevertheless, uh, I kept out a few pieces that I really liked, including that one there. And then, of course, there's the 1995, I want to say, Power of the Force 2 Snowspeeder and the 1995 ATST underneath the giant legacy ad at walker which i did a full review on a full retro review on uh just a couple of vids back if you haven't seen that go do check that out that's a fun video uh getting all the bells and whistles on that bad boy in that video so that's really really cool all right as we move down i've got yet got another large fish tank and this one is a different theme altogether, but you know, if you got space aliens, you gotta have pirates. And of course, if you have pirates, you gotta have SpongeBob SquarePants. I love SpongeBob a lot. It's that's nostalgia of a different kind for me. SpongeBob is not from my childhood, but it's from my kids' childhood. And in some ways, that's even more special. If you're a dad, you know what I'm talking about. So SpongeBob has a really welcome uh, presence down here in the archive room. Um, he is littered throughout this tank. Um, there's little SpongeBob, you know, Easter eggs all over there. Squidward in there, uh, Mr. Krabs. Uh, like I said, there's SpongeBob there on the bow of the ship. Uh, there's Gary back there on the stern. So yeah, I got this giant pirate ship recently. Looks really, really cool in there with my tinfoil barbs. This is more of a community fish tank. These are all like nice chill fish where they have asshole next door neighbors that they wouldn't want to mingle with. I guarantee you that. Um, so yeah, these are, these are the guys that chill out to Kenny G and these are the assholes that crank Slayer in the middle of the night. So Slayer, Kenny G. So anyway, yeah, that's, that's kind of the difference there and what kind of fish I have in here, not to get into fish tanks again too much, but yeah, so this is sort of a pirate themed slash SpongeBob themed fish tank. And of course that kind of continues above it. Uh, I've got some more SpongeBob kind of fish tank ornaments. A lot of these were in a, in the tank at one point, so they're kind of faded out. And there is, of course, the other unofficial mascot of the Plastic Planet. That is my Adventure People Roy action figure. Um, he's got a special place down here in the, in the Plastic Planet. And above him is my Primal Clash collection. Guys, I got to tell you, if you have not checked out my review of uh, the Primal Clash action figure line from Lanyard Toys, you need to do that because I spent a lot of time on this review. It is extremely awesome. Check it out in that, uh, that uh, I'm going to put a little card up right above it right now. Check that card out when you get a chance. This was an extremely awesome review, a very non-traditional review, not like anything you'll see on YouTube. I promise you that. And I'll get into the, uh, into the, uh, into the ABCs of that review in that review. So do check it out. And uh, Roger, the uh, action people uh, figure, has a kind of a place in that review as well. There is a there is a link between this figure from the early '80s, this action, this adventure people, uh, Roger, Scuba, Steve, whatever uh, action figure, and these Primal Clash 
uh, figures in that video. So check it out. Do check out that video. Very proud of it. And of course, as we move along here, got some more SpongeBob and there's some more Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom dinosaurs. Really, really awesome. I think that's Baryonyx back there. And then of course, there's the T-Rex. I think that's the Chomp and Stomp T-Rex. Very, very cool. Uh, got another pirate ship, some more SpongeBob, there's Squidward. And then of course, there are these T-Rexes. These are actually from the original uh, Jurassic World uh, movie that Kenner had that line. And these T-Rexes really, really suck. But if you wanna check out another fun video I did, um, check it out. The card is right there right now. Click on that card. I had a lot of fun when I got these, uh, these two dinosaurs. And I kind of had a lot of fun with them, even though the, the figures themselves are kind of dog shit. Check out that video if you want to see just a really, really fun video that I did with these guys. Um, they kind of run wild. And, and let me tell you, they're kind of panty snoopers. You'll see what I'm talking about if you click that video. So, uh, yeah, do 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 that. So, anyway, those are those uh, those Kenner Fallen uh, uh, Jurassic World uh, T-Rexes. They suck, but they made a fun video. So, anyway. All right. So, there is that. Let's keep moving, guys. Let's keep moving along. All right, so we move up from my Primal Clash core figures there. Uh, you'll see up on this top shelf are some 18-inch. These are actually really, really big figures. If I, I can get up there and give you guys a good look at them. These, are, I think these were from Diamond Select, 18-inch Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock uh, action figures. Really dig them a lot. Uh, they're older now, but they've aged pretty well. They're a little wonky in some regards. Um, I really wanted to get the, the QMX, uh, Kirk, uh, and Spock, and McCoy. Frankly, that whole collection looks amazing, what QMX is doing uh, right now. But uh, I just kind of had the cheap, so I'll stick with these guys. I think, like I said, I think if I didn't mention it, these guys came from Diamond Select. So really, really cool. Got them next to a nice mis uh, mineral rock there. Light up mineral rock. It's kind of fun. Kind of makes it look a little extraterrestrial is sort of what I was going for there. And then moving down, this gets a little eclectic. I know, guys, I did a review on this piece that I got off eBay just a couple weeks back. This, of course, from 1974 is the Sesame Street Fisher Price uh, apartment uh, from 1974. This was just, you know, such a, an amazing piece uh, from my childhood, something I didn't actually have, but I played with at preschool. I talk about that in, the, in that video where I, I show this off. Um, yeah, I know it's kind of eclectic, a little weird to have, um, in sort of a, I, I, I shudder to call this an adult action figure collection, even though that's what it is. But, uh, this kind of goes way, way, way back in the nostalgia time machine for me, just like that circus train I showed you guys earlier in the video. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it still has a very special place in my heart and really glad to have it here in my collection. And then as I move down, uh, lighting kind of sucks down here but I've got some other pieces, including the NECA Ed 209 and NECA RoboCop. Uh, there is a die-cast General Lee with a vintage Bo Duke uh, in the, uh, sliding into the window there. Got some, uh, some old vintage glasses there, including from uh, the Muppet, Great Muppet Caper, and then, of course, some McDonald Land characters. Got the Rocky IV um, video game version NECA from NECA. Uh, that's kind of a fun figure. Got a uh, got an old train uh, HO scale train uh, train locomotive there, and then of course some more uh, some more toy cars from my childhood. Well, at least three of those are from my childhood. The the generally that Nissan or Datsun, and then the and then that Challenger there, and then of course there's some modern more modern uh, cars there. And then moving down, I've got a little more Star Wars over here, just a little more stars mixed in. That is my old skiff that came out several years ago. There's kind of a mix of Power of the Force 2 figures on there, which is a little wonky, and then some more more modern figures on there. My Pote Snicken, he's really cool. Um, he's kind of a one of a kind. Uh, and then, of course, the skiff guards and Weakway and Luke, uh, the uh, Power of the Force 2, Luke Skywalker. I still like that figure. He's not nearly as beefy as the uh, some of the original Power of the Force 2 figures that came out. He still holds up, sort of. Uh, he's cool. And then, of course, there's a Han Solo there. So, yeah, I love that skiff a lot. Um, very, very, very cool. Dad, you're really old. All right, so moving down away from that uh, Power of the Force 2 skiff I have right there, I've got a Jack Pacific Darth Vader. These figures are really fun just to kind of keep in corners of the room. I've got him. And then, of course, I don't think I showed him off over there. I've got a C-3PO and R2-D2-1 as well. These are fun, these large size figures. They're just kind of fun to keep in the corners of your room, um, especially if it's just an action figure room. But moving over here is something that I'm very damn proud of. I've showed it off, I know, a ton of times 
on this channel, especially if you're a longtime viewer, longtime subscriber, you might actually be tired of seeing it. But nevertheless, it is part of the room, so I'm going to show it off as part of the room tour. And we do have some new dinosaurs to show off within it. And that, of course, is my Jurassic World, or Jurassic Park, as it would be, uh, dinosaur diorama. When these, when Mattel uh, it brought these, these figures out in 2018, I was really enthusiastic. They looked fantastic. But I knew I kind of wanted to display them a little differently. I just didn't want them sitting randomly on a shelf. I really wanted to put them in an environment that kind of suited them and it kind of really bring out the coolness in them. And so I, I put together this multi-shelf diorama that I've got going on here. Uh, basically all this is is a utility shelf uh, mixed in with uh, styrofoam rocks that I made myself. These are, all, these are actually all foam. Um, I, I have a whole video on how I did this. Um, it's from last year, last June, roughly. Um, if I, if I'm running out of cards, I, if I can put the card up, I'll put the card up for it right now. Uh, but, um, the uh, YouTube only lets you put up so many cards. Uh, so I'm going to put that card up if I can do check that video out. If you haven't seen it, I, you know, I, I made the mistake of making a dinosaur diorama video and, 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 and swearing like a sailor in it. And I kind of felt bad about that because it brought in a lot of younger viewers and I kind of felt bad because I swear like a sailor in that video. Uh, so that was sort of a lesson to me. Not that I don't mind swearing in my videos, but if I'm doing something that might attract younger viewers to at least put a, a put a age restriction on it or whatnot. Uh, so, you know, this is, this channel is for adult collectors. Um, we don't, we don't do kiddie stuff here, even though, you know, we talk about things that maybe kids like, but, uh, yeah, this video attracted a lot of younger viewers or at least parents showing it with younger viewers. And I got some back on that nothing bad or anything but uh people were a little annoyed with me uh that's okay though so anyway do check out that video if you get a chance if you want to see how i did all this again it's all just like foam and and and, and, and you know stuff from the floral department at my michaels and and, and there's some play sand in there and i mix it and I, and I walled it off with with basically with duct tape on these utility shelves i bought at home depot but nevertheless looking really really cool this is sort of a shelf i've changed up a little bit uh that's like the throw and thrash t-rex there I can get around the lighting uh, that's really really awesome him and allosaurus there are having it out over a kill there you got the you got the lions from two different geological time periods you got the lion of the jurassic and the allosaurus here getting utterly worked over and shown up by the lion of the cretaceous of course tyrannosaurus rex he's going to show him up over this kill tyrannosaurus rex is about to carry that kill off and eat it even though the allosaurus made the did all the work it's just it's just the it's just the law of the land guys and yeah i absolutely love this shelf you got a you got a stigomitis or whatever the hell that dinosaur is hiding in the trees over there but yeah looking really really cool sorry about the glare on t-rex uh, the light kind of hits him funny but yeah, uh, looking really, really awesome. Then of course, as we move up the shelf here, I've got a really, really awesome shelf. Uh, I've got a nice, like awesome running water diorama here. And that is a courtesy, of course, of the uh, desk fountain that I picked up at Michael's for half off. Um, at the time got a real nice sale still spent a ton load of money on this diorama even with getting all this stuff half off at the time but uh, yeah looking really really cool got a nice uh, little like uh, mix of predator and herbivores here got a triceratops and a cynoceratops back here uh, my good buddy uncle pat his son is a dinosaur enthusiast we're not going to name him by his real name but we're just going to call him raptor red he actually texted me tonight to want me ask me to talk about this particular piece right here because I guess, according to him, the horns on this are uh, inaccurate, as he wanted to say. And he wanted me to give this piece a shout out right here on the Plastic Planet in hopes that Mattel would see it and correct it. Um, I don't think my channel's nearly that big, uh, their big guy, Raptor Red. Uh, but nevertheless, I am making that correction for you right here on the channel. Uh, yeah, apparently Sinoceratops' horns are backwards on this piece and are not uh, not accurate. I, I tried to point out that maybe, you know, maybe that uh, InGen genetically modified the Sinoceratops so his horns wouldn't be as threatening to tourists and maybe uh, that mix of frog DNA that they use, uh, you know, kind of made a, a modified genetic uh, specimen here in this particular uh, Sinoceratops, but he wasn't buying that. Uh, he told me to point out that mistake, so there it is, buddy. There's that mistake pointed out. Thank you so much for letting me know that the horns on the Sinoceratops from Mattel are completely inaccurate. And Mattel, get your shit together! Because uh, that young dinosaur fan is displeased with you, as it would be. Uh, so there, there it is. There's a, there's a Carnosaurus there, looking real badass. Got the spitter. Di uh, Dilop I, I can't even think of their names right now, guys. I'm kind of like having a senior moment here. But uh, yeah, looking really, really cool. 
Jasper's got that running water there. Uh, got a pterodon up there. So uh, uh, yeah, looking really, really cool. Dilophosaurus, thank you, the spitter. I uh, just remembered uh, from the first Jurassic Park film. Uh, chilling right there, looking really, really cool. And uh, yeah, love this shit a lot. Looking really, really cool. These, these, just even the mechanics on these uh, dinosaurs look really cool. And they, a lot of them make sound effects. Uh, yeah, looking really, really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So anyway, there is my Jurassic World, Jurassic Park diorama for you guys. Moving up there, I got my giant T-Rex. He's completely out of scale with the rest of those. Uh, this is the colossal T-Rex, as it would be, came out last year with my Jax Pacific Godzilla. I love Godzilla, but that Godzilla kind of sucks. I, I got him because I wanted a giant, huge Godzilla for my collection, but that Godzilla just looks like a fat ass. That's not Godzilla, man. Godzilla, I prefer the Godzilla from the Toho movies myself. Uh, every time every time the uh, Americans try to make a, or Hollywood, I should say, try to make a Godzilla film, uh, they screw it up in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we'll see how the next the new Godzilla uh, movie comes out here that's coming out at the end of this month. But, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that particular Godzilla. Of course, they're on yet another fish tank. That's my 15 gallons. Just a couple mollies in there. Won't spend a lot of time on that. Flanked by my giant from the 1970s Wile E. Coyote plush uh, stuffed animal that I found at a thrift store last summer with a Bugs Bunny tin sign. Uh, there's an Armada Optimus Prime right there, and there's an old R2-D2 telephone. <laughs> Alrighty, hey guys, well thank you so very, very much for sticking with me uh, this long. Uh, this is turning out to be a very, very long video indeed, and I'm only about halfway through um, this archive toy uh, room tour. Uh, so stay tuned, I got, I'll have a part two coming up for you guys uh, within a couple days. And hey, if you're watching this anytime in the near future, just go ahead and click on that part two archive toy room tour uh, card here at the end of the video, and you'll see part two right now. So, uh, all right, guys. Well, hey, thanks again for sticking with me. And uh, like I always like to say, guys, life is oh so very, very, very short. So get out there, guys, and fill it uh, with some blasted crap. Oh, yeah, please do subscribe, too. Especially if you are especially if you just found this, uh, this, this video and found my channel, please do consider subscribing because we have a great time here on the Plastic Planet. Uh, coming up in the next video, I've got my entire Star Trek collection, a collection I don't typically feature on this channel or talk much about. So uh, th that'll be new to a lot of people. Uh, I also got my entire Transformers collection, my entire Generation 1 Transformers collection, and a uh, rather large, awesome, well, not large, but rather decent, respectable-sized, anyway, uh, DC Comics collection as well. So stick around for that coming up in the next video, or if uh, you're seeing this right now, it'll be, be dropping within, uh, you know, a day or two. So, all right, guys. Until next time. Later. Love you. Bye.